wondered why, in the account of Ham and Noah, why Noah cursed Canaan, Canaan the Hebrew pronunciation of Canaan. Why did Noah curse Canaan, Ham's fourth child? And this is what was given to me. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were the survivors of humanity from the other side of the flood. Okay. And they had within them both Cain and Abel. And when they came over to this side of the flood, they were righteous. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were righteous. They were in right standing with both Jehovah and Elohim when they appeared on this side of the flood. And within there, and they were not human like, they were not human like we are. Okay, they were Adam, mankind. And they may even have been disembodied. Most likely they were disembodied. And they were sent to marry humanity on this side of the flood because that's, that is what the creation is. That's who we are. Mankind is Adam. We are the first, mankind is the second Adam, uh, the second Adam, the Lord from heaven. We are the first Adam with the bestial aspect of the creation, we're the physical image. The first Adam of the earth, earthy. Uh, the second Adam is the Lord from heaven, he's spiritual. So, uh, so Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were all spiritual. And they needed to be married to a human woman, <clears throat> the daughter of Adam, in order to produce their offspring. So Cain was in their was in their genome. Cain, who murdered Abel, was in their genome and rectified. He was rectified. They, they Shem, Noah, Shem, Him, and Jabez represented the creation in a righteous state. So Cain had been rectified. And when Noah sinned and Ham stood up to him, okay. Uh, Noah cursed, Noah cursed Ham, saying, "What you what, if you go forward with this, you're challenged to me because Ham challenged Noah." Okay. It, but then, what we read in the scripture is a parable. It's a parable. Whatever Noah was doing, okay, whatever he was doing, probably I think, starting to receive the worship of the of the first Adam. Because, because the crime is chronic. Mankind, the second Adam, shows up. He's invisible. He appears to the first Adam through members of their own race. And they take the worship and cut it off from Jehovah Elohim. It's happened time and time again. So most likely that's what Ham saw him doing and cried out and warned him. And Noah spoke back to him and said, leave me alone, mind your own business. Because if you keep this up, you're going to undo the tikkun, the rectification of Canaan. You're going to break up the spiritual unity that we have here, and Cain will be released. What does that mean? Cain will not be rectified. You will release the evil into the world on this side of the flood. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, they were, not, they were not human brethren. They were mankind. They were the second Adam. They were invisible. Their lot was to marry the daughters of Adam. That's us. I call us humanity, or the first Adam, Adam of the earth. The creation of God is a symbiotic relationship. It's a bestial relationship, the first Adam, which is what we are, that's our body and our soul attached to it, our personality. And the higher soul of mankind is supposed to dwell in us, two separate and distinct consciousnesses, but one in submission to the other, the female personality in submission to the higher soul of mankind, who is in submission to Elohim, because the, by very definition, mankind is Elohim, uh, joined to Adam. That's what, that's what the difference is between the first Adam and the second Adam, is that the first Adam became physical of the earth, and the second Adam was penetrated by Elohim. So the creation is Elohim, okay, the second Adam and the first Adam, and then of course Jehovah gets in there too. So the creation 
is a bestial animal, okay, an animal, and um, inhabited by, there's an inhabitant, we have an inhabitant, which is Adam, and Adam himself is penetrated by Elohim, and where the Elohim is, Jehovah is, and the, the whole family of God dwells in the individual. That's the creation, brethren, okay? and that's who we are. So I stopped to tell you that, and I lost my train of thought. I was distracted, and I lost my train of thought. What am I talking about? I'm talking about Canaan. Okay. Mm. So included in that, in that module, you might say, or that new seed, or that new beginning, of, of that other beginning of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, was Cain, because Cain is a part of the creation. But Cain had murdered, uh, had murdered Abel. Like this was... This new start contained a rectified Cain because mm -hmm. the creation came over to the side of the flood in a, in a righteous condition. So Cain was, was restored to righteousness in that module, if you want to think of it that way, mm -hmm. that spiritual module that survived the flood that was now going to be disseminated mm -hmm. into, into humankind to produce offspring that would be righteous people, right, righteous beings. So. Noah was exposed, he was probably doing the same old crime as all of these, all of these archetypes, Noah, Shem, and Japheth, they were, uh, they were married to human beings. And Noah was appearing as the fivefold ministry, for example, and once again he was taking the worship for himself and cutting the people off from God. And Noah noticed it. So Noah challenged and he sounded the alarm I'm sorry, Ham noticed it and, ch and challenged him and sounded the alarm. Okay. Shem and Japheth were also corrupted, so they, they uh, would, didn't even want to look at it. They, they didn't want to look at it. So Ham sounded the alarm, and Noah threatened him and said, if you keep exposing me, if you keep doing this, you're going to undo the tikkun of Cain. Cain is going to be, it, there'll be a, this is going to be a separation. There's going to be a separation. Okay, and Cain and Abel, I'll say it to you this way, if you keep exposing me, now, instead of saying, I'm sinning and I'm going to, um, I repent and stop sinning, Noah said to him, you are breaking up the status quo, you are breaking up our unity. If you don't stop this, the creation is going to divide and Cain and Abel will come into existence again. See, because Cain and Abel join, produce, when you have a mature Adam, Cain and Abel are part of that maturity. When mature Adam breaks down, Cain and Abel both come into existence. Good and evil come into existence. Instead of a right, you have a righteous singularity that breaks down. It breaks down into good and evil, Cain and Abel. And that's what Noah was saying to him when it says in the scripture, cursed be Canaan. He was saying, because of what you're doing, blaming it on him, because you exposed me, okay, Cain and Abel are going to be come into existence again, and the evil of Cain is going to come into existence again. He was really not cursing him so much as he was predicting the future, saying, because of what you are doing, it's, in, it's inevitable that Cain will come into existence as an evil force on this side of the world, on this side of the flood. Okay. And then, of course, it was Ham's fourth child, that was named Canaan because it was known that he was the seed that would manifest the, the wickedness of Cain in this world. And then Canaan, Canaan came into existence, and that is where the evil giants appeared, and, uh, and all of the ites okay, that the Lord sent the Israelites in to destroy because they were all cannibals and doing other wicked deeds. So God sent the Israelites in to, to wipe them out. That was the evil seed of Cain. But the Israelites didn't wipe them out completely. And it's really interesting for it, because look at it this way. We don't really know from the scripture where the giants came from. We're told that, that Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth were the only survivors from the flood. That's what we're told. And now we have giants in David's day. You know, how did that happen? And we have all the Canaanites. You know, how did that happen? So. Either, either it was not a universal flood, it was not really a global flood, it was a spiritual event that God only talks about the lion that's going to carry his seed, which is what some rabbis say, okay? Or, 
or it was a whole new star, but because sin was found in Noah, okay, that unity of Cain and Abel, that singularity broke up, and the evil Cain came into existence and incarnated in a people, okay, in a people on the side of the earth that that became very big. Now, if that's true, if that's true, if the if most of the if the people, including Israel, were the stature of the average people, the average human being today, okay, where did these giants come from? Okay. Well, and, and in other words, it would would have been possible if, if this is true, okay. If the, if the giants didn't come from the other side of the flood, if it's not true that the giants somehow survived from the other side of the flood, that it really was a whole new star, and that the people of the whole new star were of the stature of the people today, where did the giants come from? It would mean that when Cain reached a certain degree of evil, because Jehovah says, you know, that, that, uh, that Israel shouldn't go into Canaan land until the until the evil is in full stature. I don't remember the exact scripture. You have to wait for the evil to be fulfilled before you, before you go in and destroy it in Canaan land. Okay. Okay. Did, the, did, 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 a, did a point in time arrive that the evil was so powerful in, these, in, in Canaan land, which were all of these ites lived in the whole land of Canaan, that at some point giants appeared? Very, some of them that were so evil became very big. Is that what happened? Okay, either they came over from the other side of the flood, in addition to Shem, Noah, Noah Shem, Ham, and Japheth, or they came into existence as a descendant of Shem, Ham, and Japheth through Canaan, which Canaan is the, is the seed of Cain in the singularity. And if that's the case, at what point did they become physically big? Because we have these wicked people doing these terrible things on the earth, and none of them are giants yet. And yet Steve Quayle is, is prophesying and predicting the return of the giants. So are they going to reach some point where they actually where they will actually get physically big? Good, that's a good exercise for your mind. If anybody knows, please let me know. I wanted to share that with you. Yes. What? did Noah think was going to happen then if he, if there was a singularity and Cain was underfoot in the right position, but yet he was sinning. So ultimately this was going to happen and, and Ham facilitated and maybe because of that it happened sooner. Like, like was there an alternative ending? Well, I don't know. I, I love these exercises. This is what I'm inclined to think. That's the way it's written. In, in the, even, even if you look at it in the interlinear text, you don't know how that's been altered by the scribes. You see, so what most like what might have happened is as Noah was going down. Okay, he was exposed. Okay, and he knew he was losing his anointing. Maybe he didn't curse Canaan. Maybe what he said was something like. Maybe he didn't curse him. Maybe what he said was something like this: "Oh boy, it's all over, and now, uh, and now Cain is, and now, and now Cain's good. Cain and Abel are coming back into existence, and, and however he was, a, he was a, a spiritual giant. No, somehow he knew that Cain would come into existence through Ham. He's saying, oh well, it's all over, and now Cain's going to rise up again, and, uh, and he's going to be cursed, and he's going to be a curse on the earth. It might have just been a prediction." And, and yes, it is a curse. And he's, and he's saying, yes, and well, the curse is in effect, you know. I messed up, you, you found me, what was me, and now Cain's going to be, and now the curse of Cain is going to be on this side of the flood. It was a prediction from a spiritual, from a spiritual giant mind. Interesting. Because all of these years, I never really connected Canaan to Cain, but that's what it means. So the descendants of Cain.